أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم. We seek the protection of God from Shaitan who has been expelled from God's kingdom of special grace and mercy. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We ask for special grace and blessings from Allah because He is the All Perfect One, the All Merciful One, and the One whose special grace and mercy is available for the believers in abundance and eternally. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyidina wa Nabiyina Muhammad wa ala alihi al-Tahirin. And we send our salutations and greetings on the Holy Prophet and on his holy progeny who are the best guides for mankind till the end of time. Respected elders, brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. This time of Rajab, there are several important occasions that we need to be aware of. The eve of the 16th of Rajab. 16th of Rajab is three days after 13th. That's the day when the mother of Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, Fatima ibn Asad, she emerged and came out from the Kaaba. We all know the famous incident that on the occasion of the birth, towards the end of the term of pregnancy, it is said that she came near the Kaaba to make a dua. And one of the observers who was sitting there, he reports that I saw this woman approaching the Kaaba and uh, she came and she made a dua there as a result of the dua suddenly the walls of the kaaba split open the wall which is opposite the the door of the kaaba that is just bet before the rukn yamani and suddenly this women this woman fatima bint asad we saw her entering the kaaba and for a period of three days, she remained inside. This became a strange, surprising event. People started uh, inquiring what happened, unexpected. They tried to open the door, the lock wouldn't open. So they realized that this was a heavenly, a divinely guided event. During this time period, three days that she was inside, there was no news. When on the 16th she emerges, she brings out a baby. And it is at that time that they discover that the birth took place on the 13th. About this stay of the Holy Lady inside the Kaaba, there are several reports. But before I mention them, one quick reference to the event even before the birth. It's interesting, in the Quran we have mention of dreams and visions being seen about holy people. So the famous example is that of Prophet Yusuf السلام, that in his young age, seven years, nine years, twelve years, the riwayat are different. He sees a dream whereby he says, I saw the eleven planets or stars and I saw the sun and I saw the moon, all of them bowing down in front of me. In Surah Yusuf, Chapter 12, Ayah number 4, Allah quotes this incident for the Prophet. إِذْ قَالَ يُوسُفُ لِأَبِيهِ O Prophet, we're telling you the best of the narrations. Remember the time when Yusuf السلام, came, came and reported to his father. يَا أَبَتِي O my dear father, إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ عَشَرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرَ رَأَيْتُهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ I saw the 11 planets, I saw the sun also and the moon also, all of them, I saw them bowing down in front of me. It's interesting, a young boy has experienced a vision. 
It's a strange vision. He wants to understand what's happening. So he doesn't share it with his friends or he doesn't share it with his brothers. He goes to his father. There is a special relationship between the father and the son such that the son trusts the father, has confidence in him and therefore asks for his guidance. Yusuf salam is then assured by the father, is given two pieces of information, good news and bad news. Yusuf, there is some good news for you and there is some bad news for you. But before I give you the good news, let me give you the bad news. The bad news is, this is, there is a potential danger and threat for you. This dream that you saw is a true dream. I'll t explain to you what's going to happen to you. But before I do that, let me warn you. There is the danger of shaitan and through shaitan, the, your brothers that they may threaten you. In fact, they may harm you. In fact, they may even kill you. So beware, don't share this information and don't disclose this information to others. And then in the next ayah, ayah number six, Allah explains to him that Allah, the interpretation of this dream is Allah definitely will choose you to become a prophet in the future. And number two, you're going to become blessed with a special miracle, a special gift, and that is the power to be able to interpret dreams. And number three, through you, the children in the family of Yaqub will be blessed with Nubuwa. The ni'mah of Allah will become tamam and complete. Just like your forefathers were blessed with Nubuwa, your grandfather Ishaq, the father of Yaqub, and your great grandfather Ibrahim were blessed with Nubuwa, so also you will be blessed with this particular status. Interesting. God has a plan. God knows who deserves to be chosen to become a special messenger and he then communicates this plan to the individuals themselves either directly or indirectly maybe to their relatives to the close relatives a similar incident is reported for Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib Abdul Muttalib Abu Talib Fatima bint Asad all the three report some version of a vision whereby they are informed that there is a bright future for this boy for this pregnant for this pregnancy when it is born so for example Abdul Muttalib says I had a vision I had a dream I saw that I was carrying a tree and this tree was huge so huge that it spread its branches spread all over the the world and then some other members in the family who tried to cut off this tree. And then suddenly there was somebody who comes and again from my, from my back, somebody comes and who defends and protects this tree from being cut off. The interpretation again, just like the 11 stars and planets refers to the 11 brothers of Prophet Yusuf salam, the sun and the moon refers to the mother, the moon, the sun to the father of Prophet Yusuf. I saw them bowing down. These were symbols. Sometimes dreams are seen very clear. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has reported in Surah Fatih. He sees a dream, chapter 48, that he's entering into Makkah. He's in Medina right now. From the time of Hijrah up until the Battle of Ahzab, the fifth year, there is no way the Prophet can go back to Makkah because of the enmity and the hatred and the fights. The sixth year of Hijrah, he sees this dream that he's entering Makkah in a state of either taqsir or shaving. And he's entering with security, no war anymore. He's a bit surprised. It's a clear vision, no symbols exactly the truth about the future is shown to him and he sees it this is one type of dream another type of dream is where you don't see the exact reality but you see it in a symbolic form in symbols so planets reflecting people or, or, or entities 
who are bright and who are illustrious. Or oh, incidentally, it also shows that these 11 brothers will later on become good. At the moment, they're evil or they're behaving in an evil way. But later on, they'll become just like stars, important people, illustrious people. And the moon, a very important uh, celestial body, and the sun, symbols of people who are powerful, who are beneficial, who are useful, interpreted as the father and the mother and the brothers. Likewise, the symbols seen by Abdul Muttalib, for example, a tree from the back, that means from my progeny, there will be a growth. That growth will expand and spread and come to prevail all over the world. But there will be a danger to this whereby there will be an attack and this attack will want to even cut off either the branches or the tree itself. But there will be somebody who will come again from my progeny who will come and defend. And the interpretation of that of course is the Holy Prophet from the progeny of Abdul Muttalib through Abdullah and the defender of this tree whose message and whose fruits will spread all over from his progeny through Abu Talib. So it's not surprising for us that God has a plan and Shaitan may have a plan and those who are the enemies of the truth have a plan. But it is God's plan that will prevail. Incidentally, this is not unique only for those people who are prophets. Even those people who are not prophets can see dreams. The mother of Musa, alayhi salam, in a dream, according to the riwayah, she was inspired to carry out that daring, bold, fearless task of abandoning the baby in the water that's not an easy task for a mother to do that unless she has conviction that this step i'm taking has been instructed to me by a very reliable source and how does she get that communication not like maryam alayhi salam where the angel appears to her in the form of a human person to communicate jibrail it was a dream Yes, she trusted that dream. That means there, were there was evidence in that dream that the dream is true and there's a communication. So, incidentally, one of, the, one of the actions that we can perform to enable us to see a dream is this particular incident that is, or the amal which I reported for the 15th of Rajab, the amal of Umm Dawood. Dawood was the milk brother of Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. A relative, she was pregnant with Dawood. She had milk in her breast. It is said that she also breastfed Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. The boy, when he grew up, he participated in a revolt against the Bani Umayyah. He was arrested, he was imprisoned. Months passed and the mother had no information about his whereabouts. On one occasion, Imam Sadiq is sick and she visits him. And Imam just asks, how is your son doing Dawood? And she breaks down in tears and she says, well, he's imprisoned, he's arrested, please pray for him. So Imam gives her, gives her this instruction of this dua, that I will teach you something, fast for three days, 13, 14, 15, the ayyamul bidh of the, the sacred month of Rajab, Shahrul Haram. And uh, after that, on the, 13th, on the 15th, then there are some a'mal to be performed. There is the recitation of the Quran. There are several surahs to be recited, which are there in uh, Mafatihul Jinan. You recite these surahs, and after the surah recitation, there is a dua. And then after the dua, there is a sajda. And after the sajda, she says she saw a dream. And in that dream, she gets this good news about the rescue and the release. And within days, Dawood comes back to her. 
So in this amal, she's supposed to recite Alhamd a hundred times, and then Surah Ikhlas, Qul Allah a hundred times, Ayat al Kursi ten times, and then these surahs. An'am chapter 6, Isra 17, Kahf 18, Luqman 30, Yasin 36, Safat 37, Hamim Sajda 41, Hamim Ain Sin Ka 42, Dukhan 44, Fatih 48, Waqi'ah 56, Mulk 67, Al Qalam 68, and Surah in Shikaq 82 from in shiqaq onwards till the end of the quran and once you finish that then there is a dua so unique dua i've not seen this dua elsewhere but then i don't claim to have scanned all the duas but all the famous duas that we recite throughout the year the content of this dua is a bit different so let me just give you a briefing of what the dua talks about basically the dua is about the different names of god that Sadaqallahu al-Azim after the completion of the Quran Sadaqallahu al-Azim La ilaha illahu al-hayyu al-qayyum Rahman, Rahim, Halim, Kareem It goes on and on And then Oh Allah I praise you Because of your beautiful names Oh Allah Your power extends throughout the universe Beyond the seven heavens And down to the earth and below And from the beginning till the end this is the physical universe. Then the Imam tells her, recite salawat on the angels. The whole universe is being run by angels, but under the angels themselves, they have ranks, and they are chief angels, the angel of provision, the angel of life, the angel of death, and of course, the angel of revelation. Singly, every one angel is now being mentioned. Allahumma salli ala Jibra'il. And then the description of Jibra'il. Allahumma salli ala Mika'il. And the description. Ala Israfil. And his description. Ala Hamalatil Arshi. And then Allahumma salli ala Abina Adam. So praise be to you who is the governor of the universe. And greetings be on those chief angels under whom there are myriads of angels who are running the universe. Number two. Number three, I salute and I send special greetings on, my f on our great father Adam. And then and the description of Adam. And then Habil and Shaith and Idris and Nuh and Hud and Salih. And, and several prophets are mentioned. Including those prophets who are mentioned in the Quran and those prophets who are not mentioned in the Quran. For example, send salam on Yusha and on Misha. And on Khidr, Khidr is mentioned, not mentioned by name in the Quran. And salams on Sha'ya, and on Turah, and Matta, and Irmiya, and Hayquq, and Daniel, and Uzair. Uzair is mentioned by reference in Quran, not directly. And Shamroon, and Jirjis. And, and then after the mention of these prophets, number four, the Hawariyin and Khalid, and Hanzala, and Luqman. These are special servants of God or successors of the prophets. After that, Salawat on Muhammad and Ali Muhammad. And then our special greetings and salutations and the salutations of better than all the other prophets. And then number six, she says, Imam tells her to say, Oh Lord, I want you to send salawat not only on those whom I've named, man usammaytu, wa man lam usammi. even those angels, those prophets, those messengers, those good servants of yours whom I've not mentioned, because I don't know their names, and because you've not mentioned their names, and because we don't need to know the names of 1,24,000, all of them, because all of them were sent by one common message and then Allah mentions examples in the Quran the examples which apply everywhere else now why was all this mentioned so the Imam tells her oh, oh Allah I want to get close to you and I want to make shafa'a to you 
with, with your own being to get closer to you, with your generosity and kindness to get close to you, with your mercy to get close to you. Oh Allah, I don't know, I don't know what to say, but I pray to you with the very same words with which these prophets were praying to you. These angels prayed to you. The ones under them prayed to you. All the other successors who prayed to you. All the good servants who prayed to you. Prayers which were accepted and not rejected. Then she begins. There's almost, I don't know how many names. Ya Rahman, Ya Rahim, Ya Halim, Ya Karim, Ya Azim, Ya Jalilu, Ya Munilu. The one who gives nawa, na, nawli, nawali, gifts. Ya Munilu, Ya Jamilu, Kafilu, Wakilu, Muqilu, who forgives mistakes, Mujiru, Khabiru, Muniru, a long list, almost two full pages of the different names of God. And then finally, single names, combined names. Again, Salawat on the Prophet. And before the end now, she says, O oh Lord, here I am before you. I'm lowly, I'm desperate, I'm poor, I'm all alone. And here I am, I'm presenting myself. I'm asking from you a dua of a humble, fearful, this uh, fearful and frightened servant, lowly, hungry, thirsty, seeking your refuge, admitting to my wrongdoings, seeking for your forgiveness. Dua man aslamtahu thiqata. I am making the dua of the one who, though I have friends, though there are people around, though they're very close, though they're relatives, I've gone to them. They either are not ready to help me or they can't help me. Where else do I go? Which door should I knock? I'm desperate. I've got nowhere else to go. I've come to you. I ask you before because you are the Malik, you are the all powerful one. Ma tasha umin amrin yakun. You are the, 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 the power of kun fa yakun. That's why I've come to you. Lakini, before I make my request, I have come in this month because it's a sacred month. I ask you because through the status of this sacred month. And incidentally, it's not only the sacred month. There are many other sacred, blessed entities. Through the wasila of all those things, I pray to you. And of course, of course, through your Prophet. Oh Lord, I'm not disappointed at all. I'm very hopeful. I'm so hopeful, I'm, I keep on saying that you're the one who gave Adam, you gave to Adam shaith when Qabil killed Habil. That was a big tragedy. The chosen, potentially chosen servant of God had been killed. No problem. Adam wasn't disappointed. You gave shaith instead of Habil. Or the one who gave to Ismail, uh, sorry, to Ibrahim. Ismail and Ishaq. Why should I be disappointed? Or the one who gave Yusuf back to Yaqub. Or the one who, who removed the bala, the, the highest level of bala, the bala in the, from Ayyub, السلام, the bala of the possessions, the bala of the children, the losses in his own body. That was the highest suffering that Ayyub could be made to undergo. Yet you rescued him. Or the one who returned Musa back to his mother and re reunited them. Or the one who increased <coughs> knowledge to Khidr and you gave Suleiman to Dawood and Yahya to Zakaria and Isa to Maryam. Or the one who protected the daughter of Shu'aib. The daughters of Shu'aib were threatened when they went to collect water. Or the one who, who, who protected and provided for the son of the mother of Musa. Please forgive my sins. Please protect me from your punishment. Please give me your special pardon and your pleasure. Please now protect me 
from every one of your enemies who tries to harm me. O oh Lord, open all the doors that have closed in front of me. O oh Lord, facilitate whatever has become hard on me. O oh Lord, prevent me from the oppression of the oppressors. O oh Lord, prevent me whoever is trying to stop me from obeying you and keep me firm always always on your ibadah you know why because you are the one who can seize and hold the jinn especially the rebellious one the shaitan especially the defiant ones the jabbar who have to come and bow down in front of you the one who can who can neutralize the plots of the oppressors against the oppressed i ask you O oh, the one whose qudra is unlimited who can do whatever he wills and then after this dua she is supposed to go to sajda O oh lord i make sajda to you and you alone O oh lord i believe in you and you alone please forgive me and have mercy on me on my desperation on my dua on my supplication i've come before you it's a beautiful dua lakini the problem is it's supposed to be for the 13th 14th and the 15th of rajab and today was the 15th of rajab the chance has gone away but the interesting thing is majlisi alay rahma in zadul ma'ad says i've come across reliable traditions that you can do the same a'mal on arafa and get the effect no majlisi says there's riwayah which says you can even do it on a friday no, he says you can even do it on any other month, 13, 14, 15. Fast on those three months, or three days of the middle of the month, and then perform this a'mal. You notice the only thing in the dua which is specific for Rajab is Allahumma inni as'aluka bi hurmati hadha shahr al haram. Oh Lord, I ask you by the blessing and blessed and sacred status of this holy month, Rajab. No problem. Majlis Ali Rahma says if this riwayah allows us to make this dua any other month, remove this portion of the dua and pray to God. The doors are open. Allah's mercy is unlimited. One. The only problem is how can we receive it? Two. To qualify to receive it, we need to purify. The way to purify is shown to us by the Imams. One of the best ways to purify is to fast. After fast to recite the Quran, after Quran dua, after dua sajda. That's the maximum a person can do to get close to God. And inshallah, our duas will be accepted. May Allah let's pray to Allah for the tawfiq, not to miss these wonderful opportunities. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.